Welcome to First Congregational Church in Guilford, Connecticut, where we say whoever you are and wherever you are on life's journey, you're welcome here. You're welcome to join us in person. You're welcome to join us online. Welcome to come to concerts on Thursdays at noon, whenever you can and however you can, you are welcome and wanted here. On this Sunday, we invite you to allow the spirit to settle about. And take a moment, roll shoulders back, open hands and hearts and minds. Let us take a deep breath in, breathing in the breath of God. Let us breathe out the love of God and continue now in this time of worship. Our scripture lesson this morning comes from the prophet Jeremiah, chapter one, verses six through eight. Alas, sovereign God, I said, I do not know how to speak. I am only a youth. But the Holy One replied to me, do not say I am too young. You can go to everyone I send to you and say whatever I tell you. Do not be afraid of them. I am with you and will rescue you. May God grant us wisdom and understanding to this passage. In 1719, Joy to the World, the Lord has Come, was written. And in 1971, another Joy to the World was released. The lyrics in the 70s version began, Jeremiah was a bullfrog. And when I was in second grade, these two songs, along with today's scripture, built an odd connection. My friends and I were relentless singing the song made popular by the group Three Dog Night. And one morning in Sunday school, our teacher read the verse that Riley just read. I remember our class kind of giggling when we heard about Jeremiah, the prophet, not the bullfrog. However, our wise teacher kept us focused by singing the song with us first and then shifting to the story of the prophet Jeremiah. Plus, brought into our conversation Christmas and the 1719 Joy to the World hymn. At the time, I had no idea, I didn't appreciate, no awareness whatsoever of the creativity it took to blend those three ideas for a group of second graders. Reflecting on this and the passage of time, I find it interesting that several of us continued through Sunday school and moved into youth group together. The verses in Jeremiah seem to weave in and out of our devotions and our lives. The scripture affirmed us as young people. It gave us guidance and courage, which helped us through our high school years. Now in our order of service today, we printed the scripture with a prompt for reflection. So as you look at the text, alas, sovereign God, I say, do not, I do not know how to speak, I'm only a youth. Take a moment and think about that and then the Holy One replies, do not say I'm, all, I'm too young. You can go everywhere I send you and say whatever I tell you. Do not be afraid for I am with you and will be with you. So for today, allow this passage to roam around a bit in your heart and mind. And then where the word youth is, ponder what we might say. I am only a beginner, a novice, a person who's been around too long a doubter, a questioner, a struggler. And then let's think about how God rephrases it for Jeremiah. Do not say I'm too young. So what might God say to you or to me? Do not say that you're too scared or too fearful of being labeled or too unaware. Take some time and fill in the blank. There can be more than one. Now as we do this prayerfully, Engage this text to address where we are in life this winter, this season, this time. 
How does this scripture relate to you and what does it bring up in you? What does it bring in up in us individually and collectively? Jeremiah, sometimes known as the rebel, the reluctant, or the weeping scholar or prophet, was from a priestly family in a small village about three miles from Jerusalem. So where are we from? What are our families of origin? Why do we ask these questions? Because each of us bring a different backstory, a history, a personality, and a gift to ministry. And there is room for all of us, all that we embody. God can empower us like prophets of old and use who we are. The scholars estimate Jeremiah was between 17 and 20 at the time of this conversation with God. He was not confident, but God was confident in who Jeremiah was. So one thing we learn from this dialogue is that we can be who we are called to be if we just lean into the Spirit, if we have others who believe in us, and if we choose to believe in ourselves too. Age, young or old or in the middle, doesn't matter. Resting in the knowledge that we are not alone, that as we read in Philippians, nothing can separate us from the love of God, gives us strength, gives us strength to minister in ways that we can't even comprehend. Some of our most outspoken eco-prophets are youthful like our own Lucy Mitchell. They call attention, call us to attention, to creation care and environmental awareness. And some of our elders certainly show us that retirement from work does not mean retirement from ministry. And last week, there are many highlights to the Grammys, Tracy Chapman being one of my favorite, and the other was Joni Mitchell, who's age 80 and who's been through a lot of health concerns and she sang but first she started facing the back of the stage and her chair slowly pivoted till she was facing the audience and with a cane she tapped out the rhythm very gently and then she began to sing and these lyrics from her I've looked at both sides now from win and lose and still somehow, it's life's illusions I recall. I really don't know life at all. Had some grit to it as we watched her after these years and these decades of journeying and now to this awareness of her health concerns and the wisdom of her age. One commentator suggested that Jeremiah's reluctance might have been that he was feeling personally inadequate. But I wonder, perhaps like the lyrics from both sides now, he had a, dip, a deeper insight that humans may never feel completely adequate in life's journey because we continue learning until we die. Every experience we have, we learn. There's an opportunity at every twist and every turn. Our hearts grow with every loss and every love. There's a lot in life that we've just not covered yet. Now, in Jeremiah's life, he preached during the reign of five kings. And Marcus Borg suggests Jeremiah's pronouncement that the death of one world was happening here and the birth of another was dangerous work as he was dismantling Judah's civic, cultural, and religious life. In studying Jeremiah this week, I, I found a treasure. I found a paper that Dr. King wrote in seminary. It was from 1948, and he received a B plus. He began by naming the temple had once been the focal point of the nation. However, times had changed. He was exploring Jeremiah. Does this sound familiar? Faith communities were once the center and now not so much. He continued that people of faith must stick to justice present, 
to prevent the exploitation of strangers, the orphan, and the widow, and to avoid the murder of the innocent. He declared that Jeremiah's teachings on personal religion was his greatest permanent value. He called Jeremiah the father of true prayer. Dr. King offers that Jeremiah struggled and named it. He believed that because Jeremiah was so transparent and vulnerable and talked about his intimate devotion, his sorrow, his conflicts, and his struggles, that the Psalms would not have been composed without him. As I read Dr. King's reflections, I couldn't help but wonder something. I sensed that he understood or perhaps felt akin to Jeremiah. He penned this. Jeremiah, throughout all of his doubts and difficulties, was able to be carried forward by the secret assurance that his business was not his business, but God's business. And this alone supported him under the most pressing perplexities and loneliness. And then he continued. Again, Jeremiah is a shining example of the truth that religion can never, should never sanction the status quo. This morning's vignette of Jeremiah's life invites us to think about our own faith journeys. Like the prophet, we too can be prayerful, act reluctant, feel inadequate, overwhelmed, or rebellious. Maybe today we can pause, release some of those feelings, and choose the gift of life. As we do so, we have the opportunity to celebrate the joy of life. From the fishes in the deep blue sea, you and me, while fields and floods and rocks and hills and plains repeat the sounding joy, we have a chance to respond to God's call. Perhaps we say, God, we are only human. And God replies, don't worry. I'm with you, and I will not leave you. May it be so. Amen. Choir directors hear the Jeremiah reading in a different way. Alas, God, I don't know how to sing. I would never got taught. I don't have a voice. I have a tin ear. And God interrupted and said, Do not say I cannot sing. You go out there and sing whatever song I give to you. Don't be afraid that it's not in tune. Just sing. happy 